Welcome to the 2021 Massachusetts DMV Written Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers that will help you prepare for the test. Question 1. Another car creates a hazardous situation by suddenly cutting in front of you. Which of these actions should you take first? A. Take your foot off the gas. B. Sound your horn and step on the brake firmly. C. Swerve into the lane next to you. D. Drive onto the shoulder. The correct answer is... A. Take your foot off the gas. Taking your foot off the gas will allow your car to slow gradually while you maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel. Do not take any other action until your vehicle has slowed. Question 2. You may drive using only your parking lights. A. In no circumstances. B. 30 minutes after sunset and 30 minutes before sunrise. C. On foggy days when visibility is low. D. In the rain. The correct answer is... A. In no circumstances. If you need to use lights while driving, you must use your headlights. Question 3. Smoking inside a vehicle when a person younger than 18 years of age is present. A. Illegal at all times. B. Legal if it is your child. C. Not restricted by law. D. Permitted if the windows are open. The correct answer is... A. Illegal at all times. Secondhand smoke is dangerous, especially for young children. It is always illegal to smoke in a vehicle when a child younger than 18 is in the vehicle, even your own child. Question 4. U-turns are legal in residential areas. A. On a one-way street at a green arrow light. B. Across two sets of double yellow lines. C. Where there is no bus stop. D. When there are no vehicles approaching nearby. The correct answer is... D. When there are no vehicles approaching nearby. Because there may be pedestrians and children present in residential areas, be especially cautious when making your due turn. Question 5. When preparing to make a right turn, you should... A. Come to a complete stop at the intersection. B. Reduce your speed and signal as you start your turn. C. Signal at least 100 feet ahead of the turn. D. Move to the left edge of your lane. The correct answer is... C. Signal at least 100 feet ahead of the turn. Signaling this far in advance will allow other drivers to react to your decision to turn. Question 6. Which of the following increases your chances of having an accident? A. Continually changing lanes to pass other vehicles. B. Looking over your shoulder when making lane changes. C. Adjusting your rearview mirror before you start driving. D. Driving near the right edge of your lane. The correct answer is... A. Continually changing lanes to pass other vehicles. Moving between lanes is risky for you and other drivers. Pass another vehicle only when necessary and when you have enough room to do so safely. Question 7. When backing out of a parking space, drive slowly and... A. Use your rearview mirror to guide you. B. Keep your foot on the brake. C. Use your side view mirrors to guide you. D. Look over your right shoulder as you back up. The correct answer is... D. Look over your right shoulder as you back up. Do not rely on your mirrors to give you a full view of what is behind you. Question 8. Highways are typically most slippery. A. During a heavy rainstorm in the middle of the summer. B. After it has been raining for a long time. C. When it first starts to rain after a dry spell. D. When the rain is sporadic. The correct answer is... C. When it first starts to rain after a dry spell. Oil dropped on the pavement by vehicles mixes with the rain during the first few minutes of a rainstorm, making the pavement more slippery until the oil-water mixture drains off the roadway. Question 9. Always look carefully for motorcycles before changing lanes because... A. They usually have the right-of-way at intersections. B. Their smaller size makes them more difficult to see. C. They are allowed to pass you on the right. D. It is illegal for motorcycles to share traffic lanes. The correct answer is... B. Their smaller size makes them more difficult to see. 
The smaller size of motorcycles makes it difficult to judge their speed and distance. It is easy to overlook them on the roadway, so look carefully before changing lanes. Question 10. The three-second rule applies to the space blank of your vehicle. A. Behind. B. Around. C. Ahead. D. To the sides. The correct answer is C. Ahead. This is the space you should maintain between your vehicle and the vehicle ahead of you. This should give you enough time to react to movements. Question 11. Large trucks turning right onto a street with two lanes in each direction. A. May complete their turn in either the left or the right lane. B. Must stay in the right lane at all times. C. Allow other vehicles to pass them on the right. D. Often have to use a portion of the left lane to complete the turn. The correct answer is D. Often have to use a portion of the left lane to complete the turn. Large trucks must make wide right turns and may need to use a portion of the left lane to complete the turn. Never drive up on the right side of a truck turning in that direction. Question 12. You should signal continuously while turning because it A. Is illegal to turn off your signal before completing a turn. B. Is always unsafe to turn off a signal before completing a turn. C. Is impossible to cancel the signal physically until you have completed the turn. D. Let's other drivers know what your intentions are. The correct answer is... D. Let's other drivers know what your intentions are. Keep your signal on until you make the turn so other drivers can safely react to your move. Question 13. Large trucks are most likely to lose speed and cause a hazard A. On long, gradual curves B. Going up long, steep hills C. Going down long, gradual hills D. When using an acceleration lane The correct answer is B. Going up long, steep hills The size and weight of large trucks makes it difficult for them to maintain highway speed when moving on a long, steep hill. Be prepared for the reduction in the speed by increasing your following distance so you can continue to see past the truck. Question 14. Which of the following statements is true about motorcyclist and motorist? A. Motorcyclists have the same rights and responsibilities as other motorists. B. Motorcycles are heavier than other vehicles and are less affected by wind and or rain. C. The smaller size of a motorcycle makes it easy for other motorists to tell how far away they are. D. Motorcycles are less affected by changes in road conditions. The correct answer is... A. Motorcyclists have the same rights and responsibilities as other motorists. Never infringe on the rights of motorcyclists or encroach on their space on the roadway. Question 15. You should use your horn when... A. Another vehicle is in your way. B. Another driver makes a mistake. C. When passing a bicyclist. D. It may help to prevent an accident. The correct answer is... D. It may help to prevent an accident. Use your horn sparingly. In many cases, it may startle another motorist, cyclist, or pedestrian. Use your horn to get another driver's attention if an accident seems imminent. Question 16. Drivers of large trucks often leave a large space in front of their vehicles because... A. The space can be used to accelerate and pass other vehicles. B. Other drivers need the space to slow down. C. They allow other drivers to use the space when merging onto the off-ramp. D. They need more space for stopping their vehicles. The correct answer is... D. They need more space for stopping their vehicles. Because of their size and weight, large trucks need more room to stop so they don't collide with vehicles in front of them. Question 17. Children in your vehicle require a child passenger restraint system if they are A. Are 5 years old and weigh 55 pounds B. 6 years old and weigh 60 pounds C. 5 years old and weigh 65 pounds D. 6 years old and weigh 55 pounds The correct answer is A. Are 5 years old and weigh 55 pounds Children of this size are too small to be safely restrained by a vehicle seat belt. Question 18. A law enforcement officer has noticed that one of the passengers in your vehicle is not wearing a seat belt. He writes a citation for A. Both you and your passenger. B. 
your passenger, regardless of his or her age. C. Only you. D. You if the passenger is under the age of 16. The correct answer is D. You if the passenger is under the age of 16. Passengers over the age of 16 are responsible for wearing their seat belts and can be cited for not doing so. Question 19. You are required by law to wear your safety belt in a moving vehicle. A. Unless your vehicle was manufactured before 1975. B. Unless you are riding in the back of a pickup or camper. C. And you may get a ticket if you fail to do so. D. When you are riding in the front seat. The correct answer is... C. And you may get a ticket if you fail to do so. You and all of your passengers who are six years of age or older or who weigh 60 pounds or more must wear seat belts. Question 20. Which of these statements is true about children riding in your vehicle? A. Children who are age two or older and weigh more than 20 pounds should ride in the front seat. B. The front seat is generally the safest place in the car for children six years of age or older. C. Children between the ages of three and five years of age should wear seat belts. D. Children under the age of one should not ride in the front seat in vehicles equipped with airbags. The correct answer is... D. Children under the age of one should not ride in the front seat in vehicles equipped with airbags. Airbags deploy at a very high speed, and small children can be seriously injured or killed while riding in the front seat in this situation. Question 21. When driving a car equipped with airbags, you are safest when you A. Maintain a space of at least 10 inches between you and the steering wheel. B. Drive with one hand on the gear shift. C. Drive with your left arm on the armrest. D. Maintain a space of at least 8 inches between you and the steering wheel. The correct answer is A. Maintain a space of at least 10 inches between you and the steering wheel. If you are sitting closer to the steering wheel than this, you can be seriously injured when the airbag deploys in a collision. Airbags need 10 inches to inflate. Question 22. How does a solid red traffic light differ from a red arrow traffic light? A. Red arrows are only used to stop traffic making a left turn. B. You are not allowed to turn on a red arrow after stopping. C. Red arrows are only used for protected turn lanes. D. Red arrows are only used to stop traffic making a right turn. The correct answer is... B. You are not allowed to turn on a red arrow after stopping. You must stop at a red arrow signal light and remain stopped until the light changes to green. Question 23. If the traffic light in your lane at an intersection is a red arrow, you may... A. Turn in the direction of the arrow after slowing and checking for other traffic. B. Turn in that direction after you come to a complete stop. C. Turn in the direction opposite of the arrow. D. Not turn in the direction of the arrow until the light turns green. The correct answer is... D. Not turn in the direction of the arrow until the light turns green. Because the arrow light controls a single lane of traffic, you may not proceed until the light is green. Question 24. You are planning to make a left turn from a dedicated left turn lane when the light turns to a yellow arrow. You should A. Be prepared to obey the next signal that appears. B. Speed up to get through the intersection. C. Stop and not turn under any circumstances. D. Use caution to make the turn. The correct answer is... A. Be prepared to obey the next signal that appears. Any type of yellow light gives you time to prepare for the light that follows it. You should stop at a yellow light unless it is safe for you to do so. Question 24. You are approaching an intersection when the traffic signal is flashing red. You should... A. Stop before entering the intersection and wait for the light to turn green before proceeding. B. Stop before entering the intersection and proceed when it is safe to do so. C. Continue driving cautiously through the intersection. D. Continue driving cautiously if you are making a right turn. The correct answer is... B. Stop before entering the intersection and proceed when it is safe to do so. You must always stop at a red light whether it is steady or flashing. After yielding to pedestrians and traffic already in the intersection, you may proceed. Question 26. You must always stop for which of the following traffic signals? 
A. Steady red lights, red arrows, and flashing yellow lights. B. Steady red lights, flashing red lights, and yellow lights. C. Steady red lights, flashing red lights, and blacked out traffic signals. D. Steady red lights, steady yellow lights, and blacked out traffic signals. The correct answer is C. Steady red lights, flashing red lights, and blacked out traffic signals. When you arrive at an intersection where there is a red light of any kind or a non-functioning traffic signal, you must stop. If it is too late or unsafe for you to stop for a yellow light, you may proceed through the intersection, but you should clear the intersection as quickly as possible. Question 27. When you approach an intersection with a green light displayed, you notice vehicles already in the intersection. You should A. Partially enter the intersection to establish your right-of-way. B. Move into the intersection and wait for the traffic to clear. C. Stop before entering the intersection and wait until you can safely enter and cross the intersection. D. Reduce your speed and drive around any vehicles remaining in the intersection. The correct answer is C. Stop before entering the intersection and wait until you can safely enter and cross the intersection. Never enter an intersection unless you are certain that you can clear the intersection before the light changes. Question 28. If you arrive at an intersection where the traffic light is not functioning, you should A. Come to a complete stop and proceed when it is safe to do so. B. Stop before entering the intersection and let all other traffic move before proceeding. C. Avoid interfering with other traffic by making a right turn. D. Reduce your speed and stop if necessary. The correct answer is A. Come to a complete stop and proceed when it is safe to do so. Treat a non-functioning traffic light like a stop sign. Stop and check for pedestrians and other vehicles before continuing. Question 29. You are stopped at a red light. When the light changes to green, there are still vehicles in the intersection. You should A. Avoid the other vehicles by making a right turn. B. Move ahead only if you can go around the other vehicles safely. C. Enter the intersection and wait for the other vehicles to clear. D. Wait until all of the vehicles clear the intersection before you enter. The correct answer is D. Wait until all of the vehicles clear the intersection before you enter. Do not enter the intersection until all of the other vehicles have cleared it. They may be going in a variety of directions and you could put yourself or other drivers in danger. Question 30. You should not enter an intersection if you know that you will block the intersection when the light turns red. A. Under any circumstances. B. Unless you entered the intersection while the light was yellow. C. Unless you are making a right turn. D. Unless you entered while the light was green. The correct answer is... A. Under any circumstances. Do not enter an intersection unless you are certain you can cross it completely before the light changes. Question 31. What should you do if you encounter this sign? A. Come to a complete stop and check your surroundings. B. Slow down and proceed as long as there are no other vehicles around. C. Check for pedestrians and proceed if you do not see any. D. Tap your horn and proceed with caution. The correct answer is... A. Come to a complete stop and check your surroundings. No matter if you see other vehicles, bicycles, or pedestrians around, you should always come to a complete stop when at a stop sign. Once you've stopped, follow appropriate right-of-way laws before proceeding. Question 32. What should you do if you see this sign? A. Come to a complete stop. B. Prepare to stop if necessary. C. Speed up to avoid collision. D. Prepare to turn around. The correct answer is... B. Prepare to stop if necessary. Yield signs warn drivers that they should let other vehicles have the right of way. When you see a yield sign, you should slow down and prepare to stop if necessary. Question 33. What does this sign represent? A. You should not drive slower than 50 miles per hour. B. Your vehicle should not go any faster than 50 miles per hour. C. The average speed of other vehicles on the road is 50 miles per hour. D. 50 miles per hour is the recommended speed. The correct answer is... B. Your vehicle should not go any faster than 50 miles per hour. You should always drive according to posted speed limits. 
This sign instructs drivers to travel no faster than 50 miles per hour. Drivers traveling faster than 50 miles per hour are breaking the law and are risking getting a speeding ticket. Question 34. If you see this sign, what should you do? A. Avoid turning left. B. Avoid making a right turn. C. Stop completely before turning right. D. Turn around and proceed with caution. The correct answer is... B. Avoid making a right turn. A right arrow indicates a right turn. A right arrow with a red line drawn through it indicates that right turns are not allowed. Rather than turn right, you should proceed ahead or turn left if allowed. Question 35. What does this sign indicate? A. One way only. B. No left turns allowed. C. No U-turns allowed. D. No slowing down. The correct answer is... C. No U-turns allowed. U-turns are useful when you need to travel in the opposite direction. However, this sign indicates that U-turns are not allowed. Rather than take a U-turn, you could turn to the left, turn around, and turn right in the direction you wish to travel. Question 36. What does this sign indicate? A. Divided highway ahead. B. Keep right. C. Keep left. D. Slippery road ahead. The correct answer is B. Keep right. This sign shows that there is an obstruction, such as a median, in the middle of the road ahead. Vehicles should keep the right to avoid collision with the obstruction. Question 37. What does this sign mean? A. Stop sign ahead. B. Yield ahead. C. Traffic light ahead. D. Railroad crossing ahead. The correct answer is A. Stop sign ahead. This sign indicates that an intersection and stop sign are ahead. If you see this sign, slow down and prepare to come to a full stop. Question 38. What should you do if you encounter this sign? A. Accelerate through the intersection. B. Prepare to slow down or stop. C. Stop completely no matter what. D. Proceed only if no other vehicles are in the intersection. The correct answer is... B. Prepare to slow down or stop. This sign means that an intersection and traffic signal are up ahead. You should be ready for an intersection and a stoplight, as you may have to stop if the light is yellow or red. Question 39. What does this sign represent? A. Right lane ends. B. Added lane. C. Divided highway. D. Merging traffic. The correct answer is... D. Merging traffic. This sign means that traffic is emerging with the main road. If you are on the main road and see this sign, give entering traffic adequate space to merge safely. Question 40. What does this sign indicate? A. Divided highway begins ahead. B. Be prepared to stop. C. Divided highway terminates ahead. D. Winding road ahead. The correct answer is... A. Divided highway begins ahead. A divided highway sign indicates that the road ahead will be split by a center strip. You should prepare to move to the right if you see this sign. Question 41. What does this sign mean? A. Draw bridge ahead. B. No trucks allowed. C. Steep hill ahead. D. Truck ramp ahead. The correct answer is... C. Steep hill ahead. This sign warns all drivers that a steep grade or hill is ahead. When you see this sign... Check that your brakes are functioning well before going down the hill. Question 42. What does this sign mean? A. Slippery when wet. B. Winding road. C. Curvy road ahead. D. Uneven terrain. The correct answer is... A. Slippery when wet. This sign indicates that the road ahead becomes slippery during wet conditions such as rain or melted snow. If you see this sign, you should slow down to account for slippery surfaces. Question 43. What should you do if you encounter this sign? A. Exit if you are not riding a bicycle. B. Get into the far right lane. C. Slow down and exit. D. Watch for bicycles. The correct answer is... D. Watch for bicycles. This sign indicates that there are bicycle riders in the area, so you should watch carefully for any bicyclist who may be on the road. Question 44. What does this sign indicate? A. Pedestrian crossing. B. School crossing. C. Children crossing. 
D. Disabled person crossing. The correct answer is A. Pedestrian crossing. This sign means that pedestrians are likely to cross the road. When you see this sign, pay careful attention to the sides of the road to make sure you give pedestrians adequate space and time to cross the road safely. Question 45. What does this sign indicate? A. No passing. B. No merging. C. No turning. D. No changing lanes. The correct answer is A. No passing. No passing zone signs indicate where it is unsafe to pass due to intersections and areas where it is difficult to see traffic ahead. Question 46. When you change lanes on a freeway, you should A. Reduce your speed before you begin the lane change. B. Assume that there will be enough space for your vehicle if you signal first. C. Signal for at least five seconds. D. Turn your steering wheel sharply in the direction of the lane you wish to enter. The correct answer is... C. Signal for at least five seconds. Give other drivers plenty of advance warning of your decision to change lanes. Question 47. This sign informs drivers they can A. Turn left or go straight. B. Turn right or go straight. C. Go straight. D. Turn left. The correct answer is A. Turn left or go straight. This lane control sign informs drivers that their lane is splitting into two directions. You may proceed straight or to the right. Question 48. At intersections, crosswalks, and railroad crossings, you should always A. Stop, listen, and proceed if you cannot hear anything. B. Roll down your window a few inches. C. Concentrate on oncoming traffic. D. Look to the sides of your vehicle. The correct answer is... D. Look to the sides of your vehicle. Other vehicles may be coming from all directions at these places on a roadway. It is not enough to look for oncoming traffic. Question 49. A pedestrian begins to cross the street after the don't walk signal starts flashing. The pedestrian is not finished crossing when the traffic signal changes to green. You should A. Proceed if you have right of way. B. Proceed if the pedestrian is not in your lane. C. Wait until the pedestrian is finished crossing before proceeding. D. Move to the far right of your lane and proceed as soon as the pedestrian has moved past your vehicle. The correct answer is... C. Wait until the pedestrian has finished crossing before proceeding. Do not enter the intersection while there are pedestrians in the crosswalk, even if they are not in your lane. Question 50. Which of the following is true when you are moving in a dedicated turn lane controlled by a green arrow light? A. All oncoming vehicles and pedestrians are stopped by red lights. B. All other vehicles and pedestrians in the intersection must yield to you. C. Unless you use your turn signal, you may go straight. D. You may turn in the direction of the arrow without checking for other traffic. The correct answer is... A. All oncoming vehicles and pedestrians are stopped by red lights. You have a protected turn. After ensuring that the intersection is clear, you may turn in the direction of the arrow without interference from other traffic. Question 51. Use your high beam headlights at night. A. As little as possible. B. In urban areas. C. Whenever it is legal and safe. D. Only on unlighted streets. The correct answer is... C. Whenever it is legal and safe. It is especially dangerous to use your high beam headlights in heavy traffic because other drivers can be temporarily blinded. Question 52. When you see this yellow sign, you should A. Always stop at the crosswalk. B. Stop and wait for a crossing guard to wave you on. C. Be prepared to stop for children in the crosswalk. D. Reduce your speed and move to the left edge of your lane. The correct answer is C. Be prepared to stop for children in the crosswalk. Be especially cautious during hours when school is beginning or dismissing, although children may appear in the crosswalk at other times. Question 53. When looking ahead of your vehicle while driving, you should A. Scan your surroundings. B. Look straight ahead at all times. C. Keep your eyes on the vehicle ahead of you. D. Avoid looking in your rear view mirror. The correct answer is... A. Scan your surroundings. Continuously check the entire area ahead of you to each side as well as the front in order to see any potential hazard. Question 54. 
To help prevent skidding on slippery surfaces, you should A. Shift to a lower gear after starting down a steep hill. B. Speed up to enter curves and slow down to exit them. C. Tap your brakes frequently. D. Slow down before curves and intersections. The correct answer is D. Slow down before curves and intersections. If you enter a curve at a high rate of speed when the road is slippery, your momentum can cause you to move into the wrong lane. At an intersection, vehicles are slowing and turning. Allow yourself more time to react in slippery conditions by reducing your speed. Question 55. You should adjust your rear view and side mirrors A. Before you start driving B. Before you get into the car C. After you begin moving D. After you merge into traffic The correct answer is A. Before you start driving After you get into your vehicle and before you begin moving, adjust your mirrors to give yourself the widest view of the outside of your vehicle. Question 56. You are driving on a roadway where vehicles are approaching from the opposite direction on your left and vehicles are parked in a row on your right. You should steer A. Closer to the center line of the roadway than to the parked cars. B. Closer to the parked cars than the oncoming vehicles. C. A middle course between the oncoming traffic and the parked cars. D. With one hand and signal your intentions with the other hand. The correct answer is C. A middle course between the oncoming traffic and the parked cars. Try to stay as far away from the oncoming traffic as from the parked cars so you will have room to react to events in either location. Question 57. Flash your brake lights or turn on your emergency flashers if you A. Are temporarily parked in a traffic lane to make a delivery. B. Are backing out of a parking space. C. Must stop at a railway crossing. D. Need to warn other drivers of an accident ahead. The correct answer is... D. Need to warn other drivers of an accident ahead. Use your emergency flashers only in an emergency situation. If your car has broken down or you spot an accident in the road ahead, you may use your emergency flashers. Question 58. What should you do if you encounter this sign? A. Exit if you are not riding a bicycle. B. Get into the far right lane. C. Slow down and exit. D. Watch for bicycles. The correct answer is... D. Watch for bicycles. This sign indicates that there may be bicyclists in the area, so you should watch carefully for any bicyclist who may be on the road. Question 59. If you want to pass a bicyclist riding on the right edge of your lane, you A. Must sound your horn before passing the bicyclist. B. Must not squeeze past the bicyclist. C. May not pass the bicyclist for any reason. D. Should maintain a cushion of 18 inches between your vehicle and the bicycle. The correct answer is... B. Must not squeeze past the bicyclist. Give the bicyclist full use of the lane and pass him or her as you would any other vehicle. Do not do anything that would startle or otherwise endanger the cyclist. Question 60. During the first 12 months as a newly licensed driver, you must be accompanied by your parent or guardian if you... A. Drive between 5 a.m. and midnight. B. Transport minors between the hours of 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. C. Transport adults between the hours of 5 a.m. and midnight. D. Are an emancipated minor. The correct answer is... B. Transport minors between the hours of 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. Transporting minors is one of many restrictions placed on new drivers. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and subscribe for more practice tests.